today on Be Something Wonderful. After this, you will never resist negative 3D circumstances ever again. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, good morning and welcome back to the studio. So be something wonderful here in Las Vegas. Big video for you today. I want to talk about this subs subscriber who's now a client. This was our second meeting, our second session. And in the first session, he was talking about like, and I think even one of you, there was a post on the channel. Someone had a sort of a similar uh, view of reality. And he said in our session that I struggled with, uh, he struggled with his demons. In other words, the negative thoughts, feelings, and what he believed negative circumstances and conditions in his life, no matter how much he imagined and even manifested, right? That he, he felt it was a struggle and that, that he wants to get there. He wants to finally beat this. This is what he said, Tom, cut to the chase. How do I beat this? in our first session together, right? And, and, but what is he really asking? How do I allow it and transcend it? Because you're not beating anything. The more you beat on things, the more you give them reality. The more you resist it, the more you make it real. The more you make it solid. You put it there when you resist it, right? And, and so in our session yesterday, he said, Tom, I really got it in a way that I've never gotten it before. So I want to talk about this, what he's seeing now. It's not like the thoughts and feelings go away. He's just not judging them anymore. It's not like the conditions, 3D conditions go away. He's seeing them differently. I want to, I want to talk about this. This is big, right? Remember, this whole discussion came up on persisting in your wish fulfilled, persistent in your imagined end. Persisting in your wish fulfilled or living in the I am vertical, as we've talked about, living in that awareness that you're greater than all realities, that you're greater than all conditions, that you're greater than all thoughts and feelings, and that as you imagine, as you assume, as you affirm your desired reality, you create that immediately within the vertical. And that experience, the physical experience, unfolds from within the vertical into a horizontal linear experience in time and space. So, it, in the, so persisting in the wish fulfilled or living in the I am vertical is not about thinking and feeling better about 3D circumstances in a reality that you judge as negative or unwanted until something manifests. Hear this, rather it's assuming that you already are who you desire to be and have what you want to have no matter what you're thinking, feeling, and seeing as the 3D circumstances of your life. This is what we moved him to. Yeah, he's manifested some things and then other things are not coming. And so we had this whole discussion that, look, you've got to move to that absolute assumption that you're already that person you desire to be, that you're not on a journey to beat those thoughts and feelings, to beat reality. You're here to create it. You're here to transcend it. You're here to allow all things to exist and then call forth your experience in that total existence that you are, right? So it, it, remember, what it, I, I love this scene in the pool of Bethesda <laughs> in, the, in the show The Chosen. It means nothing. It does nothing for you. It means nothing. Those thoughts and feelings, those Things that you're judging as negative conditions do nothing. They mean nothing. You give everything meaning. I, uh, so we hit this idea in a big way. Hear this. Stop looking out there for fulfilling conditions and see the greater fulfillment in all conditions. Do you see it? We're looking out there for, for, for fulfilling conditions, conditions that make us feel good, make us feel fulfilled. Instead, see the greater fulfillment in all the conditions. Do you see it? This is infinity. This is who you are. This is that I am awareness, all that is, all that you are, right? And this is your focus in that physical 3D horizontal experience that we call 3D reality, right? Less than 0.1% is the physical manifested experience. And there you are, the center, the I am center, not separate from anything in infinity, 
but feeling, looking at this and saying something's wrong, something's off. I've got to beat those demons. Remember, all the demons, those thoughts and feelings, these negative emotions and feelings, the, the conditions, these unwanted conditions in your life, come from, they, remember, they all come from incomplete seeing, partial perception of all that you are. You're only seeing this and judging it as something wrong. That's what we're talking about. Conditions are conditions, but I am. Circumstances are circumstances, but I am. Thoughts and feelings are thoughts and feelings, but I am. I am the creator. I am the one and only awareness within which all of these take place. Less than 0.1% in that less than 0.1% is absolute fulfillment. Remember, you can't divide up God. So wherever God is at all, the all of God is. So in that less than 0.1% is all of infinity because there's no separation. You can't divide up the one. Persisting in the assumption of fulfillment, no matter what, creates that uh, reality immediately. In other words, when you persist in your desired end, when you persist in your fulfillment, when you imagine your life the way you would like it to be, by creating a two to three second imaginal scene as you're relaxed or in a state akin to sleep, seeing that or just assuming it if you can't imagine it, if you can't receive an image, right? Creating that idea and, and persisting in that assumption no matter what because you're never seeing that greater reality. You are that greater reality, right? So that 0.1%, allow that to be what it is and call forth your experience of it. Do you see that? That's powerful. Remember, the scripture says, my father is greater than I in John 14, 28, right? And the implication is greater than I am, right? Two complete thoughts. The father is greater, meaning the great I am, that great subconscious, right? The great consciousness, that great uh, self-aware intelligence is greater than whatever I could be consciously aware of or focused on in this 3D physical experience, right? But that less than 0.1% of thoughts, feelings, and conditions, yes, it is, it, that's my focus in that father or the great subconscious is greater than that, but I'm one with it. This is what we focus on. If you stop here and get stuck here, you create the experience of lack, non-fulfillment, unworthiness, guilt, doubt, regret, anxiety, because the, the implication is of what you're feeling is that it's greater than me. My father is greater than me. The 3D world, the circumstances, consciousness, it all is greater than me. That's what you're feeling. Instead of looking at what this really means, two, incomplete, two complete thoughts, my father is greater than I am, than I am only conscious of being, but I am one with the father. But if we stop here, then that's what lack is, the lack of awareness of your true nature, the lack of awareness of, of that you're one with the Father, that you're one with the great I am, right? That, that those negative thoughts and feelings, that those negative conditions are only a partial perception of all that you are. They're an incomplete seeing of all that you are. So you, get the, so you translate this idea that it's greater than you, then that it's greater than me. It's greater than the little me that's focused in this, this physical reality, right? That has these negative thoughts and feelings. It has to beat these demons. That has to change these unwanted circumstances. That's what lack is. The, the lack of awareness of your true nature of, of reality, your true nature. So what's missing then? Nothing. Nothing except this next thought from Scripture, John 1030, the Father and I are one. So if you stop here and say the Father is greater than I, or greater than me, or greater than I am, you feel stuck, you feel lack. That's where non-fulfillment comes from. It's where the experience of non-fulfillment comes from, unworthiness and guilt and doubt and regret and anxiety. It all feels so much greater than me, right? That's what lack is. It's just Remember, lack, there's, not, there's nothing you lack. It's a lack of awareness. It's a lack of that knowing your true nature, right? Believing in who you really are. But what's missing then? Nothing. You don't lack anything other than knowing that the Father and I are one, right? You're one with the great I am. Do you see? There's no separation there, 
Within all of those manifested thoughts, feelings, and conditions is the all of God. All of God. There's no separation. So while we're only perceiving, seeing a certain vantage point, viewpoint, a perspective of that manifested reality and having certain thoughts and feelings, we are all of it. So it's that perspective when you join these two thoughts together, right? The paradox is the extremes meet. The paradox is solved. You're one with that. It's not just greater than you. You are one with it. You are one with that great I am. That's powerful. So negative circumstances and thoughts, feelings, and things are not things or reality in and of themselves, but rather the absence or lack of a thing. Do you see it? That's what, so they're not things in themselves. They're a lack of a thing. And what is that thing, that lack? It's your awareness of the real you. I am source and there is no other. That's the only thing that you could possibly lack. And you are awareness, so you don't even lack awareness. It's, a, it's about you being consciously aware of who you are, right? And that's why that, those negative circumstances, those negative thoughts and feelings are not things in, them, in and of themselves. They're created by your lack of awareness, by the lack of you knowing who you really are. That knowing's there but it's about you consciously remembering that, right? When you try to resist, change, avoid, ignore, and get rid of what's not there, because that's not even there, right? That's created from lack of awareness. You put them there and you make them real. Do you see it? Those negative, what you remember, you're judging those circumstances. They're just circumstances. They're just changing conditions. That's why Jesus said, judge not according to appearances because they're always changing. And behind those changing appearances is the greater reality, all that you are, right? So that's what it means to judge righteously. In other words, be more aware of who you really are, the real you, that having that expanded or greater perception of who you are, right? That greater seeing of who you are. So they're not even things in themselves, but when you resist them, when you try to change them, avoid them, ignore them, or beat them, like my client wanted to do, he wanted to beat those negative thoughts. He was on a journey to finally beat it, right? You don't ever get there because you keep putting them there, right? Instead, just allow those negative thoughts and feelings to be there. Don't judge them. Don't make them real. Don't make them a reality. Don't identify with them. You're the awareness. You're the only reality. You're what's real not those changing thoughts and feelings, not those changing circumstances that you call negative. You're the reality behind all of it. You are what's real, right? I am. I am source and there is no other. I am God and there is no other. When you resist evil, you give it your attention and you continue to make it real. Neville got it again, right? When you resist evil, in other words, when you resist negative, what you judge as negative circumstances or negative thoughts and feelings, or in other words, not identifying with your ideal, not identifying you as, as that ideal identity or that ideal reality or your wish fulfilled, not assuming that you're already that person you want to be, not assuming that you already have what you want to have. When you don't do that, you give your attention to, that, to those thoughts of doubt or circumstances that you want to change. And then you continue to make them real. In other words, you give them reality. Instead, persisting in your assumption of fulfillment no matter what, that's what creates your ideal reality. That's what moves your attention from the unreality of those judge negative circumstances and judge negative thoughts and feelings to the one and only reality, the assumption of your wish fulfilled, the assumption that you are that ideal identity, right? No matter what, an assumption of fulfillment equals instant experience of fulfillment. Do you see that? It is an instant manifestation. As you assume it, no matter what, you move to that instant experience of reality, of fulfillment. And then everything unfolds from the vertical, from within, to reflect and project that experience of fulfillment that you've already created. You're already there, right? This is powerful. You deny the negative circumstances and thoughts and feelings of reality by moving your attention to what you want. 
Do you see it? That's the proper use of denial or renouncing right, evil, as Neville Goddard said. Right? He, he made a distinction between resisting it and renouncing it. Resisting it, you give it reality. Resisting it, you make it real. Resisting it, you put it there. When you renounce it, you renounce it as a reality period. It's an unreality. It's not real. It, it, you don't give it any attention. You move your attention to what you want, to your assumption of fulfillment. That's why that's the most powerful thing you could ever do. Right? He, when he asked me, what's the most powerful thing? Put your attention that you're already that person you desire to be, that you already have what you want to have. Right? That's what Neville meant when he said, when you renounce evil, you take your attention from it and give your attention to what you want. Perfect. Right? That's what we mean by renounce. Not resisting it, not trying to get rid of it, not trying to change things, not trying to feel better and think better thoughts about it. It's an unreality. Give your attention to what you want. That becomes your reality. That's the only reality. That's, what a, that's why when he asked me, what's the one thing, what's the most powerful thing I can do to change my life right now? Right? Because he just felt that he was stuck in that, in that cycle, of what he called a cycle, right? Of negative thoughts and feelings and seeing circumstances is not working out. But there's no cycle. You're the cycle. You create that idea. What's the most powerful thing? Assuming that you already have that which you desire to, you already are that which you desire to be and have what you want to have. That one thing, that one assumption is the single most powerful thing you can do to change your entire life and manifest your ideal reality right now. Yes, you can imagine a simple two to three second imaginal scene of, of, of you living your ideal life, right? You with that person that, you're, that you want to be with. You with that m money in abundance that you want to manifest. All of that, you can imagine a scene. But behind that, there's nothing more powerful than the conviction, than at, knowing that I'm assuming that I'm already that person I desire to be and I already have what I want to have. Start there. That's the single most powerful thing you can do to change your entire life and manifest your ideal reality right now. No matter what you're thinking and feeling, no matter what circumstances or conditions you are seeing. This is what he did, right? Finally goes, yeah, there's nothing to beat. There's nothing to win here. I've already won. I'm already that reality. I think some of you mentioned that in the channel yesterday when someone else asks a similar question, right? Remember, when you do that, when you assume that no matter what, it inverts or flips your partial perception to see the truth behind all appearances, right? We have it inverted. We have it flipped. We're seeing, we're seeing the, we, we're focusing on the non-reality with those negative thoughts and feelings, with, that, with those thoughts and feelings of lack or unworthiness or not being complete. It's incomplete perception, but you flip it. So you see that the true reality, the true nature behind all appearances. That's powerful. So it's not about fighting your demons. When he said, fight my demons, resist nothing, renounce them. In other words, recognize the unreality of all changing conditions. Recognize the unreality of all judged negative circumstances. They are not evil. They are not demons. They are, not, they are just not reality. <laughs> Do you hear that they're not evil? They're not demons, these negative thoughts and feelings, these negative uh, manifested conditions or circumstances. They're simply not your choice. They're not reality. They're not ultimate reality, right? You create your experience of reality because you are reality. You are that ultimate reality. You are the kingdom. kingdom the kingdom's within you. So your what you say your experience is becomes your reality or is your reality, right? They are, what are they then? They're a partial, incomplete, fragmented perception or seeing of all that you are. Do you see, you can never see all that you are, right? You, Right? You are your own mirror. You're the one that decides that. You can just know that you are all that. Right? They mean nothing. They, they do nothing. All of those do nothing. Stop trying to resolve, fix, and get rid of them. Stop giving them reality and making them real. Stop trying to cope with 
thoughts, feelings, and conditions and create them. Hear it again. I've talked about this many different ways. Stop trying to cope with thoughts and feelings and conditions and create them. Right? We're trying to cope with them. We're trying to feel better about them. We're trying to think differently and feel differently. Instead, create your reality, your source. You get to decide what those thoughts and feelings mean, what those changing conditions and circumstances mean. Right? You decide what everything means. And what's the meaning that you want to give it? Fulfillment. That everything is unfolding perfectly. That whatever condition or circumstance that you're seeing or perceiving, it must be leading to everything you want because it is everything you want. In every condition, in every, in every circumstance, is all of reality. It's all of you. Every thought and every feeling. So remember, the only reason you feel negative emotion is you have an assumption of non-fulfillment. You have an assumption that you need something to be complete. You have an assumption that you're not worthy or not whole or not complete. Right? When you go to that assumption that I am complete, that I am source and there is no other, that I am that I am, well then it's impossible to, to have a sensation of non-fulfillment because you are fulfillment. And if there are sensations there, there are thoughts there, don't identify. You don't have to identify with them. You can just leave it there. You can feel it and just say, well, I'm greater than any thought or feeling. Go to that. Feel that power, right? Stop putting all your time and energy in trying to think and feel better about reality, the reality out there, right? And create it. Assume fulfillment no matter what, right? Stop giving all your time and energy to trying to cope and feel and think better about reality that appears out there and create the out there because there is no out there out there. It's all you. <laughs> so all negative circumstances, thoughts and feelings, or what we call lack, come from the lack of awareness of your true nature. That's the only lack that could ever be. And not even that's real because you're, you are complete, whole, divine, no matter what. Whether, no matter whether you perceive or see lack or not, it doesn't exist. It's not a reality. But you can have the experience of it by having this lack of awareness of your true nature. Right? Incomplete seeing and perception as you look outside of yourself for love and for fulfillment. When we look outside of ourselves for love, fulfillment, worthiness, right? proof that we're worthy, proof that we're fulfilled, proof that we're loved, then you, then you create that idea of non-fulfillment because there's, even if you had a, it, didn't, it wouldn't matter how many people said they loved you or how much, how much you manifest or how much money you get a house is, you're still going to have that feeling that it's not enough because, it's all, because you are the screen within which all of those things take place. You are fulfillment itself. The very the very experience of non-fulfillment or unworthiness or not enoughness means that you must be absolutely fulfilled and worthy or you couldn't have that experience because, the ex because non-fulfillment doesn't ex exist. Do you see it? Lack doesn't exist. So to have that experience must mean that you're absolutely fulfilled, that you're absolutely worthy, that you're absolutely divine. That's powerful. So your journey to win over the demons and unwanted thoughts, feelings, and realities is a wild goose chase. You just create it. You create the gooses that you chase. <laughs> and you chase them. You create the goose and then you chase it. Stop that. Be still and know that I am God. After this, you will never resist negative circumstances ever again. I am your host, Tom Kieran, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness where we help you level up, become the best version of yourself. Creators, thank you. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for liking and sharing and commenting on the videos. Thank you for being part of our Facebook group, the Be Something Wonderful Ambassadors at facebook.com slash groups slash Be Something Wonderful for joining us on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen and for being part of our membership channel. Don't forget this Sunday, April 28th, 2024 at 9 a.m. Pacific Coast Standard Time, Sunday morning, we're going to come to you live right here from the studios of Be Something Wonderful, where I'm going to talk about the questions 
and topics that you've been sending to us at info at besomethingwonderful.com. If you're a member, join us. It's gonna be broadcast on the Be Something Wonderful membership channel. If you're not a member, there's a link below if you wanna check it out. There's also a video coming out, a new video, new content coming out on the membership channel this week. Creators with great love, with great light and infinite gratitude. This is Tom Karen in the studios of Be Something Wonderful. Until next time, we'll see you soon.